Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Oh yes, that's right, Dungeons and Dragons 5e is on the table for today. And the topic is Exploiting Way of the Astral Self Monk. Yes, that's right, it's in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. It's the new thing that everybody wants to play with. And I thought what I would do is break down this class or subclass to the best of my knowledge and give you a really good rundown as to how you can use this in your game and some of the problems you might face. Now, when you're playing in your own home game, that's a very different kettle of fish. But when you're playing in Dungeons & Dragons Adventurers League, you really need to have very clear rules. Okay, here's the problem. The wording for this subclass is highly confusing, so it's possible to make mistakes in any kind of interpretation which means that I could make mistakes interpreting this because there's very little in terms of sage advice on the subclass currently. Now, if you want to look at the information, you'll find it on page 50 and 51 of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. That's where you will find the Astral Self Monk. Well, now that we've covered that part of it, let's talk briefly about what the heck this thing is. Because what is an Astral Monk? A monk who follows the way of the astral self believes their body is an illusion. They see their ki as a representation of their true form, an astral self. This astral self has the capacity to be a force of order or disorder with some uh, monasteries training students to use their power to protect the weak and other instructing um, aspirants to uh, how to manifest their true selves in the service to the mighty. So I'm just suggesting that they don't necessarily have to be of a good alignment or be good. They might be evil or working for an evil entity. I think that's probably where they're going with this. Wizards of the Coast is pretty much trying to open the ball so you can do anything you like and there's no restrictions. So let's talk about forms of your astral self. The astral self is a translucent embodiment of your monk's soul. So we're talking about the soul. We are talking about the astral self. It's, and that's what I'm really excited about, right? And I'm sure you are too. As a result, an astral self can reflect aspects of a monk's background, ideals, flaws, or bonds. And bonds. And as an astral self doesn't necessarily look anything like the monk, for example, the astral self of a, um, a tanky human might be reminiscent of a minotaur, um, the strength of which the monk feels within them. Okay, so basically you can make it look like anything you like. Similarly, a, an orc monk might manifest gossamer wings or a delicate visage, uh, representing the gentle beauty of the orc's soul. Each astral self is unique and some of the monk, um, some of, <clears throat> and, and some of the monks of this Masonic tradition are known more for appearance of their astral self than their physical appearance. When choosing this path, consider the quirks that define your monk. Are you observing, um, ob um, obsessed with something? Are you being driven by justice or a selfish desire? Any of these manifestations or motivations can manifest in the form of your astral self. Okay, so I want to just talk very briefly about this section because I, I looked at it and I was like, oh God, what is going on here? Seriously, that's not really what I was thinking in terms of an astral being. Um, so I find the flavor of the astral self seems a completely warped. Maybe not completely warped, but certainly warped, a bit strange, a bit confusing, and frankly a bit nonsensical. It's actually one of the parts of this subclass I definitely don't like. I really dislike it a lot. The mechanical forms of the astral self are also, and I will explain, are quite boring. They're rather odd, and they are absolutely key hungry. You are going to burn through key like you wouldn't believe it, and frankly I found it really disappointing. That doesn't mean I'm not going to explain to you how to exploit this subclass. The only thing is, they could have done a better job as far as I'm concerned, and they did not. Um, and I'm, I'm not pleased at all, because very few times does anybody consider a monk overpowered, um, or even really doing things that 
you know, would really be nice to be able to do as a monk. A lot of the things in terms of being a monk are never represented in Dungeons and Dragons, and I find that hugely frustrating. Okay, so there are th three things that I want you to consider when you are building your monk and uh, are playing it at the table. First is, you want to pimp out your wisdom score and your modifier, of course, rather than dexterity and strength, okay? Because it improves everything. It's going to improve your armor class, your stunning strike saving throw DC, your strength checks, surprisingly, gosh, would you believe it, strength checks with a monk, um, your strength saving throws, your unarmed attack rolls, and your damage rolls. That's a huge amount of the monk right there. So as a result, you absolutely have to put lots and lots of points and sink them into wisdom, because that's the only way this monk, I think, is really going to work. Otherwise, it's a waste of your time. Okay, second is you need to use the arms of the astral self. That is key. You should use them all the time. But here's the problem. When you run out of key points, you're screwed. You're absolutely screwed at lower level when you run out because you have to have them to be able to actually get those astral arms going. Um, and they are what make the whole thing tick. The next thing that you might not have considered, and this is number three, that is Way of the Astral Self is actually a grappling subclass. <laughs> it's actually, it, it almost feels like it's definitely built to be a grappling subclass where you can grapple, you can shove, but you don't have advantage on athletics checks or strength checks but you can use your you can use your wisdom in place of strength um, instead of the other attribute, which is usually strength. Right, being able to use wisdom rather than strength is great. You don't have to spread your points too far across your character. Otherwise, it's a real bummer to try to make it even work. Let's look at the first ability: Arms of the Astral Self. This is a third level way of the Astral Self feature. Your mastery of your key allows you to summon a portion of your astral self. As a bonus action, you can spend one key point to summon the arms of your astral self. When you do so, each creature of your choice that you can see within 10 feet of you must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take force damage equal to two rolls of your damage of your martial arts die. Okay, so that's going to mean at low level it's probably only going to be a d4, so that's 2d4 damage. It's not a huge amount, but it's an area effect, so that's quite good. Uh, it's going to last for, what, 10 minutes? These spectral arms hover near you, your shoulders, or surround your arms, your choice, you decide. You determine the arms' appearances, and they vanish early if you are incapacitated or you die. <clears throat> so it's pretty clear how these work, and that's just the first part of it. That's quite a lot just to start with. But it doesn't end there, because these things have more uses to them, which is why you definitely want to be using them as often as you can. While the spectral arms are present, you gain the following benefits. So if that wasn't good enough, you get more. What is that? First off, you can use your Wisdom modifier in place of your Strength modifier when making strength checks and strength saving throws, which is what I talked about just a, a few minutes ago. You can use the spectral arms to make unarmed strikes. Great, that's good news. When you make unarmed strike when you make an unarmed strike with the arms, on your turn, your reach for it is 10 feet greater than normal. So instead of having five foot, you've got 10 foot for your unarmed strikes. That's good. The unarmed strikes that you make with your arms can use your Wisdom modifier in place of your Strength or Dexterity modifier for attack and damage rolls, and their damage type is Force, which is huge. Doing Force damage, there are very few creatures that actually have resistance to Force. So let's break down this. How can we use this and exploit it to its, its most? What are the things we need to actually do with this um, to make it useful to you? Well, first off, I would say absolutely with regard to this, this feature lasts a long time. It lasts 10 minutes, but it can't be dismissed. You can't dismiss it. And it can't be spammed in the same battle. 
unfortunately. So that means that area effect feature that you get with the arms when you first put them into play, you can't use it over and over again if you really wanted to, particularly if you're surrounded by enemies. That is one of the biggest problems. This thing is certainly long enough to get through one combat, but not long enough to be useful later on to do other things, because it's only 10 minutes. The spectral arms probably can't be used to handle any kind of hazardous substance or pick up objects that might uh, cause damage to you, but it's worth trying in my opinion. <laughs> Who knows what your dungeon master will allow. Uh, I mean when you have to deal with an ooze. You know, striking an ooze can cause a lot of problems for you. Um, hitting something like a mimic and getting stuck to it. You wouldn't be able to get stuck to it if your astral um, form or arms are actually striking it. How would they get stuck to it? It doesn't make any sense. Those are the sorts of things that you might be able to do and the actual astral arms themselves can make unarmed attacks but they must be able to do something else because they have stipulated that they can make strength checks. You can use strength, you know, make strength checks and you can apparently uh, use that to make strength saving throws. So I'm assuming in some way you should be able to handle the environment or objects around you. But who knows if that is in fact the case, because it's not even remotely clear. And of course, a lot of people will say, yes, but if you look at the wording, if it doesn't say it, it's not there. And if it says unarmed attack or unarmed strike, that's all you can do. Okay, next thing. The astral arms can't be combined with the 10 foot reach with an opportunity attack. So if you wanted to use your astral arms with a 10 foot reach because something, some creature moves out of your reach because you've got that extra reach, you can't because the attacks made with the astral arms state they are made on your turn. And almost every time you make an opportunity attack, that's always going to take place pretty much exclusively on somebody else's turn rather than your own turn. Now that's a big bummer because it could have been really useful otherwise. You can, at least with these astral arms, you can move in and out of melee combat to make unarmed strikes with monsters that have a reach of only 10 feet and you can withdraw from them without provoking attacks of opportunity because you never actually enter their threat range. And that's one of the really useful aspects of these arms with that, uh, that reach feature that they have. You can now initiate a grapple or even a shove to be, and you will be more effective because you can rely on a higher wisdom modifier, which of course you're going to pump up, rather than trying to do something like relying on strength. Because otherwise you're spreading all your scores between strength, wisdom and dexterity with a monk. And that's a really hard thing to do. To run, I mean, it's always been a problem. Okay, unarmed strikes that do force damage. It's like having a... I guess you would say it's comparable at level 3 to having the benefit of a magic weapon. Um, but once you get to level 6, it's not going to matter. Okay, Unarmed strikes that do force damage, it's kind of like having a magic weapon at level 3, which is a huge benefit. But once you get to level 6, it's not going to be um, that useful, unfortunately, for you. Um, but there are other things that you can do with this. It's all right. Here we go. The bugbear race, while using the arms of the astral self, would allow them to make an unarmed strike with a 10 foot reach. Because of the feature that they have and the way that they make unarmed strikes themselves, a bugbear can make an unarmed strike that's got a 10 foot reach. And you're going to add another 5 foot to that, so that's 15 foot that you can actually strike out at if you select the bugbear race or the uh, dungeon master allows you to do so. Now, you can't grapple with the 10 foot reach, unfortunately. But I could be wrong. It may be possible to do so. Um, I think the wording sort of suggests that the 10 foot reach is only going to apply to something revolving around making an unarmed strike. And you could say, well, it is making an attack, so therefore you should be able to grapple with a 10 foot reach. And if you're a bugbear, you could grapple with a 15 foot reach but I don't think it's going to be very easy to do. I think you'll find most dungeon masters will shut that down. So what are you going to do when you're playing this monk? Probably the thing that you're going to do is you're going to use one key point 
for your flurry of blows and a stunning strike uh, with another to get maximum effect on your boss monsters. So that means you need to spend one key point to get the arms, another key point for the flurry of blows, and another key point for your stunning strike. So that's a total of three key points to actually be able to smack that boss monster uh, with the reach that you want and do a reasonable amount of damage and hope sh hopefully shut them down. So you can see this is just one aspect of how hungry this particular subclass is with regard to key. And it's one of the reasons why I am not very fond of it, unfortunately. Okay, next thing. Visage of the Astral Self. You get this at a uh, sixth level, okay? So level six, you're going to get this. You can now summon the Visage of your Astral Self. As a bonus action, or as part of the bonus action you take to activate the arms of the Astral Self, you can spend one key point to summon this Visage for ten minutes. It vanishes early if you are incapacitated or you die. Okay. The spectral visage covers your face like a helmet or a mask. You determine its appearance. While the spectral visage is present, you gain the following benefits. And you get quite a few benefits, but are they any good? There's the problem, right? First off, astral sight. You can see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical, to a distance of 120 feet which is a pretty good advantage, okay? That's better than dark vision, essentially. Because you do, in fact, get... <clears throat> I'm pretty sure you do get um, problems around uh, having to make um, perception checks with disadvantage. Even if you've got dark vision and you're looking around in um, darkness, you're going to get disadvantage. I don't think that's going to apply here, so you don't have to worry about that, which is great. Uh, wisdom of the Spirit. You have advantage on Wisdom, Insight, and Charisma, Intimidation checks. I don't quite understand this one myself. I'm sure there is some way of applying it in a roleplay manner, but it's not really something I'm terribly excited about. Let's move on. Word of the Spirit. When you speak, you can direct your words to a creature of your choice that you can see within 60 feet of you, uh, making it so only... That creature can hear you. Alternatively, you can amplify amplify that voice of yours so that all creatures within 600 feet can hear you. I'm not sure that that's necessarily going to be hugely useful, but I believe that the words of the spirit is supposed to be used in conjunction with uh, wisdom of the spirit, with those intimidation checks. So a booming voice, and you scare a lot of individuals, hopefully, and they flee, and then you don't have to worry about um, activating your arms <laughs> if you if you haven't got them going um, because that would burn up more key points. Okay, so what way can we use this particular feature that it will actually be useful to you in your game? So first off, spending two key points will gain you the astral arms and the visage. That is very key hungry. So even if you use a bonus action and uh, you get the arms and the, uh, the visage. <laughs> okay, that's two key points. But there is an option to spend one key point to summon the visage, which is frankly, I think, awful in my opinion, um, and not summon the astral arms, which I don't know why you would do because the whole subclass is built about around wisdom now because of the astral arms features. So it's a, it's a real weird one. I don't understand what's going on here. Anyway, let's move on. What else can we do with this thing? Now, Astral Sight is very powerful. And you can target and notice monsters before they can see the character. Before your character is going to be noticed by monsters that have a 60 foot um, darkness, um, uh, um, dark vision, you're going to see them well before that. But you can't, <laughs> you can't really benefit. You're not a ranged character class, so you can't really benefit from this like, say, a Warlock with Devil Sight. And this particular feature is very much like Devil Sight, that, uh, that uh, Astral Sight. So you can't make long-ranged attacks at 120 feet, <laughs> because you just don't have the tools, unless you multi-class or pick up something else, or go and use um, a feat somewhere along the line to actually make it all work. So that is one of the biggest bummers, I think, with regard to this feature. I like the idea that you can see in darkness and magical darkness, but I mean, heck, 
could we not have got something a little bit better to go along with it? Anyway, um, this makes it very good though for exploring and scouting. So your astral site will make it very good. Now provided you go and pick up something like proficiency in stealth, otherwise, because you're going to have to do this on your own, it's not like you can impart this ability to somebody else, you're the only one with it. So you've got to do the hard um, labour. Now, if you're going to do the role of the rogue and be the scout, you need to have stealth. So if you're not proficient, you're going to have a lot of problems using this because you're going to get spotted as well eventually, probably not by sight, but by sound. Okay, what else can we do? You could select the drow race and then cast magical darkness on yourself because drow can do that. And the enemy, so you, you drop it on yourself, your character, and the enemy, and then you beat them senseless, senseless, and they can't see you. Guess what? You have advantage on your unarmed strikes now. You can, um, in part, they will have disadvantage because they will not be able to see you. Because essentially it's magical darkness. Unless they have an ability to see through magical darkness, they're blind. So they get disadvantage on their attacks. You could even, if you don't want to pick up the drow race, get another character to cast darkness on top of you and the enemy. And then you can just beat them to a pulp. Um, wisdom of the spirit is circumstantial. I would say circumstantial junk, frankly. Uh, that allows you advantage on scaring monsters and NPCs. And there is a place for something like that. But I don't really see an astral monk functioning like that. I don't understand why we have that particular feature here. Okay, Word of the Spirit. Now, when I looked at Word of the Spirit, I thought, oh, that's not too bad. And then I'm like, uh, this is actually like a cantrip level message and thermatogy. But unlike those particular cantrips, and it's good to have utility abilities in, tied into your, your character, don't get me wrong, but they are less useful than the original cantrips. Could you not have just given them message and thermatogy so that they got all of the benefits of those particular spells rather than a watered down version of message and thermatogy? I mean, the range is a bit different um, in terms of how, you know, and, and it's a long distance. 600 feet is a long distance, granted you. That's a long distance, absolutely. But I don't like this feature. I d and frankly, I don't understand why it's supposed to fit in with an astral monk. I mean, do astral monks run around um, yelling at people and scaring them? I don't understand this one. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Body of the astral self. You get this at level um, 11. Uh, when you have both your astral arms and your visage summoned, you can cause your body of your astral self to appear no action required. This spectral body covers your physical form like a suit of armor, uh, connected with arms and visage. You determine its appearance. Now this means that you do not have to spend a key point to actually get the body of the astral self. Okay, There's no additional one, but you still have to spend a key point to get the arms, and you need to spend a key point to get the, um, the visage, and then you can have the body as a you know, a throwaway. While the astral body is present, you gain the following benefits. So the benefits you get from the astral body are pretty significant. I wouldn't, I'm not going <clears> to <throat> downplay that at all. It is pretty significant. Deflect energy. When you take acid, cold, fire, force, lightning, or thunder damage, you can use your reaction to deflect it. When you do so, the damage you take is reduced by 1d10 plus your wisdom modifier, a minimum reduction of 1. So I would like to point out, look at this. There is no saving throw. It just It's just going to happen. When you use your reaction, you're going to um, reduce the damage by 1d10 plus your wisdom modifier. That's actually a very good feature. Okay, When you do not have to roll dice and it just works that's excellent. All you're doing is using your reaction. And yes, there are lots of things that a, a monk can use their reaction for, but this would be a good one to use it for. Empowered arms. Once on each of your turns, when you hit a target with the arms of the astral self, you can deal an extra damage to the target equal to your martial arts die. So... <clears throat> I mean, that's all right. At low levels, it's not a lot. In fact, you will probably be doing less damage. Um, this might put you back on par 
<laughs> well, no, it's not because you get it like level 11. So it's not going to put you back on par. Um, what do I want to say about this particular feature? So I, I thought the first feature was really good. I like that. Deflect energy is pretty good as it applies to attack rolls and saving throws and you can use your reaction. And so that's great. Awesome. Empowered arms is like a, the monk smite. You're smiting with a monk. Um, but it's not as good as a paladin smite. A paladin um, smite is, is not going to be anywhere near as good. Um, sorry, a paladin, paladin smite is much better and your monk smite is nowhere near as good. So that sucks. I frankly thought that that sort of sucked for level 11. Frankly, for level 11, and that's what you get. I'm not impressed. But the deflect energy feature kind of makes up for the fact that the other feature is not as good as I would have liked to see. Anyway, the last feature, Awakened Astral Self. You get this at level 17. Uh, your connection to your astral self is complete, allowing you to unleash its full potential. As a bonus action, you can spend one, uh, sorry, five key points. That's right, as a bonus action, you spend five key points to summon the arms, the visage, the body of your astral self, and awaken it for ten minutes. This awaken, awakening ends early if you are incapacitated or you die. While your astral self is awakened, you gain the following benefits. Again, you cannot dismiss it, which is problematic if you need to do something like that, which I'm not too sure you want to do so in the middle of combat. Anyway, this is what you get. Armor of the Spirit. You gain a plus two bonus to your armor class. Okay, so a plus two bonus to your armor class is a pretty good um, increase. Astral um, Barrage. Whenever you use your extra attack feature to attack twice, you can instead attack three times if all the attacks are, are made with your astral arms. So in other words, they have to be unarmed strikes. And they have to be made with your astral arms. That is a lot to spend. So you're getting all the features that the class has. And you're getting... Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that five key points is um, warranted for something like this. But let's have a look. Um, so activating the astral features for 10 minutes is very good, even though, frankly, in my opinion, it's a lot of key points. It is a lot of key points, and it probably won't matter because you're going to be level 17, and at level 17 you've got so many key points to burn through anyway. Um, and, frankly, you're probably never going to get to use this feature because almost nobody plays at level 17 anyway. So <laughs> it's sort of, it's, it's all very well, but you're probably never going to get to play with it. So um, it's not a, a big loss, frankly, in the end, if you can't do anything super cool with it, which I would like to think you can. But <laughs> that's not going to happen today. So <clears throat> my advice to you is to multi-class into the fighter first and take the fighting style unarmed fighting on page 42 of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. If you're allowed to do so, do that. Because you're going to get a 1d6, which can be potentially a 1d8 with your unarmed strikes early on at level 1. So that means that when you finally get um, the, the levels in Monk, so you'll need to take one level in Fighter and three levels in Monk, and when you get to level um, 3 on the Monk, you get your Astral Arms, and now you can do a lot more damage with them because you've got a D8, which frankly is probably the smartest way to deal with that particular problem. Don't, don't, I don't want to know, I don't want to even argue why does a fighter at level one get a fighting style called unarmed fighting that's better than a monk. I don't understand it. Do you understand it? I don't understand it. There are some things that I feel that are missing from the astral monk, like astral protect I can't astral um, do any kind of astral projection I can't do any astral healing I my stunning strike should I, th I felt should be better but it's not really better I can mathematically pump it up and make it better by increasing my wisdom and my wisdom modifier that will kind of help 
but there's no real huge benefit to that. And I would have thought that punching somebody into their soul, and I kind of feel that's what you're trying to do. Uh, I keep seeing that image of the Ancient One punching uh, Bruce Banner. And, uh, you know, uh, his, his, his astral self, his soul, just comes out of his body. Uh, <laughs> and it's, uh, we, we're not going to get to do that. And astral sight, I, truthfully, I, I thought that true sight would have been smarter. And it probably didn't need to be quite as far because we're not a ranged class anyway. So we're never going to get to benefit from it. So why, why make it 120 feet? Unless, of course, the only intention was to allow you to just explore. Be an explorer, take stealth, and do what I suggested. Okay, so if you like this video, fantastic. I hope it was helpful for you. I know I have kind of dumped on it a lot. It is not my favorite monk. Um, there are a lot of things they should have done to make it better, and uh, to make it, I mean, it did not have to be a combat machine. I did not expect a combat machine. I expected somebody who could manipulate their astral self, their soul, and journey into the other world. And I don't really see that in the Astral Monk. Um, I have hundreds of videos for players and Dungeon Masters. You're welcome to go and check out. I have a series on Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. And you're welcome to go and check those videos out if you want. If you want to support the channel so I keep doing video content like this, you can do that through Patreon. The Amazon affiliate links down in the description. The merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos. Or just watch my videos, that's fine too. Make sure to share, like and subscribe. Hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And I go live a lot. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.